Hey, everybody. I'm on the Zoom meeting again today. And uh, as part of our series of talking to photographers and industry leaders, I have with me today my good friend and author on Photo PXL, Steve Gosling, all the way from Yorkshire, England. You yeah. I think that's you nearly, you nearly said that. You nearly said it right. <laughs> nearly said it right. So, don't you guys make pudding there or something? Yorkshire pudding? <laughs> Yorkshire pudding. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Steve, welcome. And uh, thanks for being with me this morning. I know it's the afternoon for you there. So you're probably drinking. I'm drinking coffee here. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Same, same, uh, same here, mate. <laughs> there we go. And uh, this is part of the, the talk about what are we doing during our lockdown? And all of us around the world is... Uh, everybody knows we're kind of locked into our home and locked into uh, a routine that is totally different. Many of us have seen our business dis dissolve right in front of us. Um, yeah. And we're facing some new challenges, and that's what we're going to be talking about. And in regards to those challenges, um, Steve and I do workshops together, and we've accompanied each other around the world doing numerous workshops. So uh, that's going to change. But we both had a workshop scheduled right about this time in um, the Faroe Islands. And unfortunately, we refunded the money to all of the participants and uh, rescheduled for next year with the hope that next year uh, we may have some of this under our belt and can begin to uh, get back out there as photographers with a group of people and, and do that again. Fingers and legs crossed here, yeah. <laughs> so it's been a tough time. Um, and so my goal is, is to talk to my friends and others that are out there and find out you know, what are you doing? What have you done? First off, are you healthy? Yeah, I'm staying healthy, thankfully. Yeah, still keeping fit and managing to get out and walk my dog once a day, which keeps me sane and hopefully keeps him fit. So, yeah, now I'm good at the moment and long may that continue. But they're saying in the UK, we are not at our worst point yet. So things are going to get worse before they get better. So. Yeah, we see that all the time. And I guess, you know, your your prime minister, who is it, Boris? Um, Boris, Mr. Boris, Johnson. He caught it and went through the whole routine. And, uh, you know, maybe he has a little respect for it now and uh, understands what's needed to keep that country safe and keep you guys healthy and moving forward here. Yeah, let's hope he appreciates all the good work the NHS are doing now. You know, it's kind of a weird bug, isn't it? That you got to consider, you know, this is not a gun war explosions, you know, raid a city, take over a city, do this or do that. It's not a terrorist attack, you know, where it's localized and, you know, we worry about security and everything. This is a worldwide issue. Everybody in the world is suffering from it. And yeah. I think it's the first time that I know of it, you know, as a world, you know, we're, we're coming together and working together to try to, to solve the problems collectively. And, um, you know, this, this could do something good for us maybe in the end, if we, if we do it right. Cause I hope so. I, I hope that we will learn to cooperate more than we have done in the past. And I hope also that we learn to appreciate our environment a little more. Um, well, it's been think, great waking up in the morning and listening to all the bird song around here. Uh, and I wonder if we would have had so much bird song if we'd have had the usual amount of traffic. Probably not. So oh. every every cloud has a silver lining, as they say. Yes, there does. And you know, you, you read some of the things in the paper that you know there's like the Himalayas are being seen for the first time, or the whole mountain range and Mount Everest. You know, in, in 30 years, you know, gas consumption is down. Uh, what I think I heard at least 30 or more percent. Um, you know this. There, it, you know, it's nature size and wise, it's doing pretty good. I mean, you know, I think of all the places that we could be right now and, you know, we're not stomping on ground or anything like that. And, you know, maybe it's a time that uh, nature kind of takes a breath too and refreshes herself. I hope the polar yeah. bears and Salbart are doing good, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be, um, it would be good if nature could recover some ground against us humans really. So talk, let's talk photography for a minute. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, when, when this has happened and everything, uh, you know, what was your first reaction in regards to, you know, your business model, which is running workshops, doing one-on-one -on -one things and so forth. You can tell us a little bit more about that, but obviously it affected your business and, you know, what was your reaction? What happened? Yeah. Um, initial concerns were, I guess, you know, health worries, me, my family, um, 
and then economic concerns about the business you know would my business get through this because i've as i'm sure lots of other photographers in our situation have seen my business my workshop schedule just fall like a pack of dominoes um working its way through the year i still have a couple left in my calendar for the back end of the year and i'm hoping again that fingers crossed i'm hoping that i'll be able to get out and run those but I don't know at the moment. I'm just like everyone else, keeping a watchful eye on how things develop. Um, so it was pretty scary, really. And I got into, if I'm totally honest, I got into a very negative position about all of this, you know, quite, um, you know, watching all the the newscasts, listening to the radio, reading the newspaper and getting more and more uptight and concerned about where this was going and how it was, was or not being dealt with. Um, and so I was worried about the the business, but I, I reached a point, I sort of went through a phase of being disoriented, you know, didn't really understand it, uh, felt quite low. And then I decided that actually, I've got to be positive here. This isn't in my control. And as a control freak, I find that quite difficult <laughs> to accept. Um, you know, this isn't in my control. I can only handle the things that I'm directly responsible for that's in my sphere of influence. So I decided to try and reframe things and say, okay, you know, what are the p potential positives in this? And how can I... Um, how can I turn this into an advantage to me? Um, and so I've I've tried to stop thinking about the negatives. That doesn't mean to say they've gone away, but I'm trying to focus very much on the on the positives, looking forward, not not regretting how things were, but looking forward and trying to anticipate what things might look like in the future, and trying to use this as an opportunity for me and my business to take stock really you know are you making prints or selling prints are you organizing images what are you using your time to do <laughs> right okay um well believe it or not looking behind me i've actually spent some time tidying my office up if you think this looks untidy you should have seen it before um, i can attest to that <laughs> <laughs> how many times i said dan you got to clean your office up and yeah i know I behind know. me here i've I, just thrown everything on the floor where you can't see it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well everything i've put this side of the computer screen so you yeah. can't see it. <laughs> no it's so i have used it as an opportunity to to tidy up i've also been doing things like image catching up on image processing because like you i run from one trip to the next trip and i get very little, little time to process the images that i'm taking so i'm i've been trying to do some image processing i've started writing blog posts on my website again and when i looked i hadn't written a blog to post since uh, i think it was january 2016 which is not good but i've just been so busy i haven't had time to do it um I think most importantly, I've been thinking about my own personal development, which I think is something that we, certainly photographers I speak to, we tend to neglect. Um, I don't get a lot of time to focus on me when I'm running workshops all the time. So I've been looking at photographic books. I've been looking at videos on the internet, visiting websites, reading as much as I can about photography, going on your website, for instance, and catching up with articles, looking at the work of other photographers who perhaps I wouldn't normally look at. So not landscape photographers, for example. So people like Elliot Erwitt, Ralph Gibson, uh, Matt Stewart, Martin Parr, Saul Leiter, all of those people whose work I've been interested in but never really taken a lot of time to explore so it's been a an opportunity for personal development that's um, that, that, and that's been a real benefit i've really enjoyed that my wife laughs at me because now i've allocated one day a week for personal development now she thinks that's just playing around time but you know for me it's ser serious time it's the day i probably enjoy the most in the week so i've tried to retain some structure so i have an emails day and i have a business development day and i have a personal development day and they're not you know they're not rigidly structured but i'm just trying to allocate my time to specific things that are so i feel like i'm still pushing things forward and i'm still benefiting well that's that's a that's a good way to do things I suffer from ADDD, adult attention deficit disorder. <laughs> and, 
I really probably yeah, should. Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> <laughs> I really should try to pick a day where I just say, today you're just going to do this. I've got, you know, two workstations in here and uh, printers downstairs. And it's like I get started on something and go, oh, shoot. And I run over and get started on something else and I come back to do this and then it's off to do something else. Now, you know, I've discussed this with Deborah and, uh, uh, you know, I used to say this to my mom too. And I go, well, you just got to think of it as a gift. You're multitasking. And yeah. I mean, in the end, everything sort of gets done. But, you know, like I'm kind of like the high energy thing. And it's like, okay, I, I, I can't do this writing anymore. I'm going to go down and take all the old cameras out of the closet that I don't want anymore, put them in a box, label them and list them and try to get them up for sale. And then when I get bored with doing that, which is like three thirds of the way or two thirds of the way done, I come back <laughs> up and go, oh God, there's three emails here. So I do the emails and then I go, ah, maybe I just finished that article now that I've had a clear brain. I thought of a couple of things. I sit down and start typing again. And then, you know, I hear, God, man, there's a lot of stuff on the table downstairs. When are you going to get those cameras off the table? I say, oh, shit, I got to go finish that job. <laughs> See, this, this, this is, if you think about the way we both approach our photography, yeah. and I know you're always taking the rise out of me about this, that's exactly sums up our different approach to taking photographs so you know you're jumping around taking 15 different photographs and i'm just concentrating on the one so you're the you're the hunter you keep moving around and i'm the fisherman i stay there and wait for things to happen and i think have listened to you there that's exactly how we take photographs it is and, and for those people that don't know steve and i have, have a blast taking photographs i remember the first time i photographed with steve uh where were we in ireland or scotland and there was Island, there was a yeah. dock and we, we got to this. Like, oh, that was the Isle of Sky. Isle of Sky. Sky. And there was this dock and, you know, on the dock was a concrete dock and had these docking rings and sailboats. And I mean, there, there's a lighthouse off to our right. There's other boats to our left. I mean, there's like, I'm seeing like 30 images and I'm going, oh, wow, this is like photo rich. And Steve goes, well, yeah, I'll be there in a minute, but I got to get this one shot. And like, I go off and I go and shoot these pictures. And I come back and he's still bent over his tripod shooting this one shot. And I go, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm, I'm making it the shot. And I said, well, come on, you know, here, get out of the way for a second. I bend down, look at the shot, put it in my viewfinder, shoot it. I said, there, it's done. Let's go. <laughs> and, you know, Steve, Steve works. And, and this is one of the reasons why I really like him. Cause I do learn something from the fact that you do slow down once in a while. And, you know, you do work the image perfectly. And, you got a badass umbrella you hold over your head when it's raining and, you, you know, you think of the exposure. And Not that I don't think of all those things. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm more of a prolific photographer, I guess. I shoot very fast. But to yeah. watch you work an image and realize what you're working for and, and, you know, push it in the camera to pretty much 90% perfection is something I've always admired and respected. And now while we joke about it a lot with each other, yeah. um, it, 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 it doesn't uh, take away from anything, uh, but I have terrific respect for it. Now, whether you have Thank the same you. respect for me, the fact that I'm running around like a maniac shooting pictures, that's a different story. But, you know, we get our images. And, um, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think- I, I do, because I, I, I always learn from people that do things differently to me. It, it may not mean that I change the way I work, but I think we can always learn from watching other people. You know, my wife has a great poster up in her office and it says if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you've always got and so sometimes <laughs> it's nice to work out your comfort zone to do things differently it is and I'll show you I, some photographs where i've done just that in a bit but anyway and, and once in a while i mean I, I there's two things that i do um a lot of times i i go out without my camera or put it away for a few minutes and sit there and take in uh you know the location we're at and then once in a while, I really try to emulate you because I said, hey, it must be something I'm missing here. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do try to slow down. And really, at, at, when, I, when I do, and that's, you know, I use the word for that uh, contemplative photography. Um, you know, it, it, it does look have, at, does look, have at, look, at the, look at the book that I'm reading. Where, whose book is that? Andy Carr? Andy Carr, Michael Wood. Oh, yeah, the practice of contemplative photography. So this is one of the things that I'm reading as part of my personal development. Interestingly, well, well, you use that word. How hard can it be? Look at a scene, set your tripod up, 
and just hang out for a while, something might happen. Need to think about what you're trying to say about the location, though. Uh, now, that brings me to another point. And let's just bring out another thing that I believe you've taught me over the years very well. You have a philosophy in, in your photography, a lot about feeling and thinking and touching and how's it make. Tell me a little bit more so the audience gets a, a little bit of an idea of why you do what you do. Because you, you really put more than just, oh, a snapshot, put it in a frame, looks good composition. There is a, a process you go through, and I've always respected that process. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I believe that behind every successful photograph is a thought, an idea, a concept, or an emotion. So to push the shutter without being clear about what you're trying to say is a bit like starting to write a sentence before you know what you want to express. So... I try to be clear with myself. What is it that's intriguing me? What is it that's interesting me, appealing to me about the subject? Um, you know, and that could be a macro or shot, or it could be a wide vista. And as part of that, I ask myself, how does this subject make me feel? And how can I represent that photographically? Because I, I find that the photographs that work best for me that communicate to me are the ones where I'm expressing some sort of mood or emotion rather than, yeah, you know, that's pretty. Uh, we had somebody you'll remember, and I know, you know, she, she will know who she is and she'll forgive me for saying this, but we had somebody on the Greenland workshop and I kept saying to her, why are you taking this photograph? And she said to me, well, it's pretty. And I kept saying to her, you can't photograph pretty. Until you can define what it is that makes it appear pretty to you or interesting to you, how do you know that you're actually photographing the thing, the core thing that's drawing you to that subject? So I'm a great believer in be clear about why you're pressing the shutter before you press it. Now, I have to say there are some exceptions to that rule. And sometimes I know that something's intriguing me and I'm not quite clear what it is, but I will take the photograph anyway. But generally, before I fire the shutter, I've got a pretty good idea about what I'm trying to say. And also, I've got a pretty good idea of how the final image will look. I do Antarctica trips every year. And normally I invite four or five of uh, my friends and fellow photographers that are very talented people that I, I cherish deeply uh, to go to Antarctica with. And, you know, most people go to Antarctica and Antarctica is immense and comes at you fast. I have never seen somebody defy what normal is as you did on your trip to Antarctica. Um, you know, we'd jump out and there'd be so many things to photograph seals, all this kind of stuff. And you would take, you, you, you stood by your mantra so well. And, you know, you, you would see things and slow down and look and, and photograph totally different than anybody else. And your Antarctica stuff, the, what you've done in Antarctica, and you have a book, you can put the thing up so people can uh, uh, get this book and order it from your site. Uh, it was just phenomenal. Uh, it's one of the, the most beautiful books. I have it sitting on the bookcase uh, behind me. And um, I think you did a marvelous job of actually because, you know, when you open your book, you, you feel something. And I'm, I'm hoping that the looking at the images, I'm feeling what you felt, what you thought, and how you saw, because you did it different than everybody else. We all okay, come back with you. great penguin pictures and iceberg pictures and stuff like that. But, you know, it wasn't about coming back with 10,000 images for you. It was coming about back with what the vision of what you saw there was. And Yeah, yeah. I remember you again, taking the rise out of me on the ship and saying that to all of our participants, Steve Gosling is the only guy I know who come, could come for three weeks to photograph South Georgia and Antarctica and only use one 32 gigabyte card, which actually wasn't true. Um, I used four. No, I, I used <laughs> a lot more. But <laughs> It was a hell of a trip and uh, we all came back with great photographs, but the, the yeah, yeah. Amazing project trip. you did was uh, tremendous. So have you been working on any photographs now that you can share with any of us? I certainly have. Yeah, just let me, um, I can show you some here. This series that I'll, I'll show you, I'm starting with two that I've taken recently, and they're part of a series that I'm calling Light Entertainment. And they are complete contrast to how I normally work. So these are things that I see when I'm 
walking around um, that appeal to me that make me smile. So this was taken at the weekend when I was out walking my dog and we walked through the centre of town. And there's a shop that um, uh, was a shoe repairers, but they also cut keys. And of course, they're closed due to coronavirus, as you can see from the sign on the window. And um, I, it just the title came into my head, closed to key workers. Now, I know that's a terrible joke, <laughs> yeah, key workers. <laughs> oh, my. But, but but it just it just appealed to me. But the one that I took the other week is probably my favorite of those I've taken while I've been on semi lockdown. Um, and it's this one. Um, my wife and I walked to the local pharmacy. She needed to pick up a prescription, not COVID related, I hasten to say. And um, when we got there, there were these two dogs tied up to the same post outside the pharmacy, but they were practicing social distancing. <laughs> and, and, way, and way more effectively than a lot of humans I've discovered when I've been out on my walk. So, um, so yes, photographs that, that I take when I'm on my travels out and about walking the dog, I always take a, a camera with me. So I, I get photographs like this. These are a few that I've taken over the years. And one of the things I've been doing while I've been stuck more at home is to go through these images and start to pull them together because they've been taken over a period of 30 plus years um, and I'm trying to pull them together into one portfolio um, and I've just started that process. So this one was taken many years ago um, on um, a beach in North Yorkshire and I saw this guy blowing up the, the, the rubber ring and it looked to me like as he was blowing the rubber ring up his shorts were sliding down his backside. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my title for this is Beach Bum. This was taken at the same place in North Yorkshire. And I have to admit, I stole this photograph from my son. And there's this miserable looking guy who was sat at the bottom of a helter skelter underneath a sign that said all the fun of the fair. Um, and he certainly didn't look like he was having a lot of fun that day. And um, this was taken in Prague. And uh, I saw a monk at a cash point outside a bank. We were just walking past. I just saw it and grabbed it very quickly. Again, the title came to, to me as I was, or probably before I fired the shutter. And uh, the title for this is Holy in the War. These aren't your contemplative ones. So you, you do have the ability. So we actually have that talent also to go out on the street and instantly see some of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And which is why, you know, I said to you that, yeah, yeah, I think we all have a preferred way of working, but sometimes it's developmental, beneficial to go and work in a completely different way, which is why I like doing street photography, because it is so completely different to what I to what I normally do. I do, too. I just it's so much fun to go out on the street. Uh, this is this is another one taken while I was waiting for a train in a train station. And um uh, it just looked like these two people were minding the gap. You know, the train, the train guards call out, mind the gap. Well, it looked like these two were taking that literally. This was taken in Oslo. Now, this, this is slightly different in that yes, I saw... It is. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I hope we, we haven't got a, a sort of a under-16 category here. Um, yeah, the shop on the left was a sex shop with these two mannequins in the window. And I saw the potential for this image, and I said to my wife, what I need is two people in the right-hand window, but they need to be the right sort of people. And so every time we were in this part of town, I insisted that we walk past this, um, this arrangement of the sex shop on the left and the cafe on the right. And I couldn't believe it after, I don't know, two or three days, probably. I came across these two ladies, and we've got... Um, the, the, the lady on the left in the cafe with blonde hair slightly turned to her left yeah. and, the brun and the brunette lady on oh the right. And they're both, they're both mirroring the, the mannequins on the window on the left. What a fabulous um, picture. Just, just one of those, um, one of those things when the, where the, the, the gods of photography smile on us. This is another one of those that I just saw and snapped. Uh, this is a Chinese and fish and chip takeaway. Um, and it was called Shun Fat. And I, my title for this is Mixed Messages. So I'm not quite sure how you can shun fat and eat Chinese and fish and chips takeaways. 
This one's called Peekaboo Bear. I was just happening to, to walk the dog along a canal towpath when I was over in Manchester and saw this bear looking like it was just peeking out behind the curtains mm -hmm. at me. This one was taken in London and I saw this particular scene. So this um, painted lion um, on, the, um, on the door of an industrial estate uh, with the sign, with the shush sign, on the right hand side and actually the whole of that sign said shush uh, be considerate of our neighbors when leaving this site but i just thought it, it, it with the right person walking in front of the lion like the lion was about to pounce on them sure. this could make quite a an amusing photograph so uh, i waited probably about an hour i think for this lady to to walk past engrossed in her phone totally uh -huh. oblivious to the fact that the lion was about to to pounce. Uh, this is another one where I saw the potential for the shot. I saw the sign, pedestrians with the two arrows, and I waited quite some time for two people to walk past. I wanted them in light clothing, so they stood out against the background, and I wanted them to be about the same height, so the, the arrows were pointing to the back of their heads. And uh, my title for this is Stating the Obvious. Some more recent photographs. Oh, okay, sorry. Let me go right, we got you back again. It's nice to know that you're still there. These were taken uh, over the last uh, week or so when I've been out walking the dog, and they were taken probably less than 200 yards from my house. And what they are are painted road markings, and I've taken one photograph, and then I've flipped it or rotated it to create pattern photographs. Ah. Art so, would be proud of you. <laughs> well, I was I was sort of getting in touch with my inner art wharf when I was taking these, I have to say. <laughs> so I'm glad that art would be pleased. I'll just run through these quickly because they're just a bit of fun. I'm not sure whether they'll they'll actually go anywhere, whether I'll do anything with them, but I'll just run through. But this is what I've been trying to do to stay photographically sane. And, Keep and my... distanced at the same time. So. Sorry? And distanced. Oh yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, these were these were taken just me and the dog, um, and um, taken very very close to home, as I've said. You and that dog have some pretty good adventures together. Oh, I tell you what, we'll like Hergé's adventures of Tintin, me and the dog. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Raw shark tests. You know, you can. I've shown them to different people, and they all see different things in them. That's beautiful. Oh, God, nice. Thank you. This looks like someone jumping for joy, I thought. I don't know. I think it looks like an X-Wing fighter from Star Wars or something, but that's cool. Yeah. Actually, um, that's, that definitely yeah. could be the new psychological test, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, you you know me. I'd probably uh, I'd fail any psychological test. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond hope. Yeah. That, now, you see, this one's a good example because I saw this as a sort of um, – a sort of mini robot thing you know one of these things you used to get on computer games from the 1980s you know um 1990s this looks like a robot my wife saw this as a seat now what that says about our um psychology i'm not sure but um there you go anyway yeah so so that that's some of the things that i've been doing while i've been trying to to amuse myself with a camera yeah uh, i i've got um the new fuji x uh 100 f or v i guess and um of course, I've kind of been waiting for the weather to change. Being April, I've been expecting 60 and 70 degree days, and we've had just nothing but freezing cold days. And, you know, kind of a family-wise, a very um, trying week or so. But yeah. um, now that things are sort of under control, I think it's time that uh, I throw that camera over my shoulder and get out and, and do some walks that way. I, I live in a <clears throat> neighborhood, so I don't have some of that visual stuff is much i mean there is visual stuff here because deborah went out the other day and found some great visual stuff yeah but, um you know i kind of like the sidewalk and you know the feet and the people and so yeah i think it's time to go out and i also want to try to do some uh empty street photography for lack of better words um yeah you know, there's a lot of that going on and this uh, is a great opportunity yeah, yeah. i want to do some of that so um that's something on on my list and i i'm going to just push myself to do that in the next few days yeah um you know, great stuff, Steve, but I want to talk to you a little bit about what happens next. Where, you know, how do you see the future of uh, our businesses and photography, um, you know, people that would come on our workshops? Well, what's going to happen, do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've psychologically, I've sort of written out the rest of this year. 
in terms of workshops um as i said before i've got a couple at the back end of the year and i hope that they will they will go ahead but i i it's much better i think to psychologically prepare yourself for the worst case and hope for the better case um so i've sort of written out workshops I, my concern is I'm, I'm and i'm not a medical expert by any means but i can't see any country truly coming out of lockdown until we have a vaccine and I don't think we're going to have a vaccine for probably 12 months earliest. Um, and so I'm, I'm concerned about my business and my workshops and what will happen next year. Uh, I'm planning trips. You and I are planning a, our postponed trip to the Faroes. Um, so, you know, again, fingers crossed that, that that happens. So I'm still planning trips for next year. Uh, but I'm also anticipating that I might have to provide personal development to people teaching to people in a different way so doing things online so already starting to plan doing webinars presentations um online portfolio reviews q a sessions etc etc any anything that i can do online yeah, of I'm course con the i'm considering the same thing and it's funny I, you know, I had a similar interview with art wolf yesterday and uh you know, he's making a 25 series kind of uh, project, which we'll highlight during his video, um, yeah. you know, that can be sold online. And, you know, he faces the same problem. I mean, who's going to get on an airplane until they can test everybody and know that they get on the airplane, you know, virus free? Um, you know, who's yeah. going to get on a ship and go to Antarctica with me? And, you know, for that fact, you know, who wants to go to a trip to Faroe Islands? Where number one, you got to fly in an airplane and then ride around in a van with six people for, you know, 12 days. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's it's a changed world and it's it's scary. And, you know, we're not the only business suffering. I mean, you know, sporting events, who wants to go to a, a, a sporting event or a car race or a, a basketball game, you know, where there's 30,000 people and, you know, one person sneezes. Can you imagine that? Like, you know, <laughs> you're in there and you're Kachoo! and the whole yeah. place is silent. <laughs> Yeah, well, before we went into lockdown, I was actually, we were sat outside, but I was queuing up at a, inside a cafe to get two coffees for Julie and I. And, and I just sniffed. And that's all I did. I just sniffed. And the people in front of me moved several feet away you know i hadn't sneezed i hadn't coughed there was nothing wrong with me well you know now of course we're people are even more paranoid than they were then and, and i can only see that getting worse until we know we can go out safely then people are going to be dominated by paranoia and fear yeah and it is there's going to be quite a bit of that i think and uh, in some areas it could be a lot rougher than you know, we can imagine and of course over here in this country we're as confused as the dickens with you know what our leadership is saying the governors want to do one thing the president wants to open up the world and you know virus be damned the invisible enemy that scourge you know that china virus you yeah. know uh, yeah it's it's confusing i think you know uh, deborah and i plan to do the same thing you know she she works in a law office and at this point she's now working from home and i've always worked from home but you know i worry about my gallery and whether i can sustain that uh, yeah. We were converting it over to, you know, a classroom style to start doing fine art printing workshops with cooperation of Canon and Epson and uh, Image Print and a few others. And uh, we'd still like to try to stay that course and hopefully, you know, something will happen that we can do that because I think that's quite important. But, you yeah. know, we're going to be doing things like this online and um, I'll be offering critiques and uh, lessons and so forth. But, you know. Yeah our normal means of business is like a lot of other people. I mean, I'm not saying we're the only ones, you know, the whole world has changed as a result of this. So yeah. And, we'll yeah. Tell. and, and I, you know, again, looking for silver linings, uh, my wife has been telling me because like you, you know, I run from one trip to another and my wife has been telling me for a couple of years that I need to slow down one, you know, personal health and sanity i need to slow down and not be doing so many trips um but also i'm i'm the one that keeps moaning about i don't have time to work on these projects and i don't have time to process my images and so now i'm trying to to, to look at the silver lining and say well i do have that time and perhaps if i have to restructure my business to do some more online that enables me to keep some income coming in in the longer term not just while we're in lockdown but in the longer term and then be more selective about the trips 
that I do, which will hopefully free up some space for me to to concentrate more on my photography because I feel like that's been neglected in in recent years. Well, you know, the world faces a challenge. The fellow photographers face a challenge. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming online and chatting with me today and telling and, and sharing the challenges that you're seeing and what's going on. Um, you know, you, if you ever get any spare time, you can always write another article for Photo PXL. We'll always I'd, appreciate I'd, that. I'd, ha I'd but, happily um, do that. Um, you know, I think maybe collectively, uh, what I'm thinking is that there's ways, you know, where photographers like you and me, you know, can put on a paid web webinar and, you know, talk about, you know, style and composition and, you know, allow photographers to get some sort of education so that when they get back out in the field, they're a step ahead of themselves a little bit. So yeah, yeah. you and I will probably have some conversations about that in the future since we talk on a weekly basis. But that would be cool. You know, I look forward to it. I completely always am uh, trying really hard to, you know, rethink everything. And um, one of the things that I've been doing in shutdown, and I'll, I'll show everybody when it's finished, is I ended up buying some gigantic Lego kits and building a, a Land Rover Defender right now. And All right. Really, and it, to me, it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'll <clears throat> go down in my man cave and work on this. And for a few minutes, you know, an hour or whatever, you know, it, it is a time to... Uh, escape, you know, get away from my photography, get away from the computer screens, you know, go down to my space and, you know, you click a bunch of plastic pieces together and you actually create something. And um, I guess, you know, a lot of us need to kind of seek and find our own therapy somewhere, whether it's a walk or a project or something along those lines. But um, boy, it, never in my life would I thought that we would see something like we've been experiencing now, but it is here and we can't run away yeah. from it. And the best thing to do is you know, face it head on and figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to fix it. And I think interviews like this where photographers, you know, like yourself, share what you're experiencing and other people can relate to is, is a big plus. And I uh, thanks. Thank you very much for doing this. No, thank, thanks for asking me, Kevin. It's always good fun to chat to you. <laughs> yeah, we always have a good laugh. Um, <laughs> and I want to thank the, the readers of Photo PXL and the viewers on uh, YouTube uh, for visiting here. We're trying really, really hard to make something special, make a community out of Photo PXL. And, you know, our goal is to, you know, help you enhance your vision. And uh, I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing and reading. And, of course, always open up to good comments. And feel free to, if you've got something you'd like to contribute, I'm always open to articles. And if you want to talk to me and you got something to say, heck, we can do a Zoom call together and record it and see how it turns out. But anyway, Steve, my regards to uh, Julie. And I'll say, Julie, we have a story <laughs> about that. Um, but I, for years, I, I called his wife the wrong name just because I couldn't understand Steve's English accent. Um, because you I don't speak English, my friend. You don't speak English, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you don't speak the American proper. You don't even spell color right. You know what, what the word I'm going to use, don't you? Aluminium. How do you get <laughs> aluminum out of aluminium? Anyway. Uh, I can't even say Jaguar, right? How do you say, <laughs> say the car Jaguar? A Jaguar. Jaguar. A Jaguar. A Jaguar. A Jaguar. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to take the mick out of you, but I couldn't even do that as Jaguar. Yeah. A Jaguar. A Jaguar. Jaguar. <laughs> so this is what normally happens. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much, Steve. Have a great day. Go out for you, a walk man. with your dog. Discover a few more images, and uh, uh, we'll see everybody. Take care.